welcome to Churches United. We thank God for being here today. We thank God for our many blessings. Thank God for allowing us to be able to get up out of our bed and get here on this rainy day. Today is raining again in Dublin, but we just thank God for the rain because it's getting time to start planting those gardens after a while. So I thank God for it um, because I, I did go by Home Depot and saw some tomato plants I wanted. So the rain is truly necessary. We're going to start out today with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us, for keeping us, Lord, for making ways out of no ways. God, we just thank you. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you for TV 35, for letting us be able to come on today. And Lord, we just thank you and we give you honor. We give you glory. Amen. Amen. Um, today is a good day because today is uh, one of my reading days. When it rain, I read, you know, and I'm still in this book right here, um, The Gifts and Ministry of the Holy Spirit. This book, this is not my book. Um, I'm just reading out of it and I'm learning out of it and I'm trying to help y'all learn too. So I just want to uh, talk about the Holy Spirit today uh, because I'm a real spiritual person and I believe that uh, God is a spirit and that he moves in the spirit and, and that he is able to, uh, to connect with us in the spirit. Uh, he hears us in the spirit. He walks with us in the spirit. He talks with us in the spirit. Uh, we need the Holy Ghost. He left it for us, to comfort us, to lead us, to guide us. So I just thank God for what he's doing and I praise him. So, um, and I thank God for, for my sponsors. I thank God for everyone who watch this show, everyone who uh, tune in, who really need to be connected in the spirit. Hallelujah, God. So um, I'm going to be talking about the, the gifts, the spiritual gifts. There are spiritual gifts that we have, spiritual gifts that we have that we don't know we have, spiritual gifts that we can ask God to give us. We can go to him and say, God, uh, please, Lord God, bless me with the spirit, uh, the gift of tongues, Lord God. Give, uh, just give me the, the wisdom, Lord God. Give me discernment, Lord God. And he will let you know what you already have because then all, all of a sudden it'll begin to activate and you'll begin to to move in the spirit, you begin to uh, be able to discern things. You'll be able to speak in tongues, you know. And I tell everybody, if you get to a point in your life and you pray hard enough and you you really pour out to God with with uh, I'm going to say snot and tears, you gonna you gonna start uttering something because you're gonna pray so long that it's nothing else to say, and then you will begin to speak in tongues, and the Holy Ghost will fall upon you when He see that sincere and that prayer that you're giving God is really, really in need or something. You know, we get to the point in life that um, things come in our life where we, we, we really need the Lord. We really need to cry out to God. We really need him to uh, answer us. So we really go in. Those days that you really go in, begin to seek God's presence. Amen? Amen. But I'm just going to read a little out the book and we're going to talk about it. Uh, I thank God for y'all, all, all y'all who watch me all the time. You know, Miss Bertha. I see people in the grocery store. I don't know them by name, but they be like, I saw you on TV. You know, you done so good. Um, I saw you on Churches United, you know, and they, they encourage me, you know, and I thank God for it. I thank God for y'all telling me that you love the show, that you like hearing this show, that you learn from the show, and that you write down the scriptures. One lady told me, I write down all your scriptures. Amen. So today we're going to, the scripture is, this whole thing is going to be based on the scripture of 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. 12 and 31. And it reads, but honestly desire the best gifts, the best gifts. See, God give the best gifts, the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. Wow, that's awesome. We can ask God for the best gifts. And he, then when we get them, he'll show us an excellent way to use them. Amen. But I'm going to just read a little about this book. And it said, God wants to motivate us by the same gifts of the spirit that he used to motivate the men in the Old Testament. Amen. We are all connected to the Bible. Uh, the Old Testament, great men in the Bible 
uh, God used. And he, he used them through the word of wisdom. Amen. The words of wisdom and his wisdom. That's that's what we need to seek a word from God. You know, you don't have to be a prophet to seek a word from God. God will give you a word. But most of the men that he used in the Bible, they was prophets. Uh, as Noah was not a prophet, but he found out that he still heard a word from God. Amen. He still could hear God speaking to him. A lot of us today, we're not prophets. You know, uh, I've been ordained as prophet as Sandra Bennett. But before I even was ordained as prophet as Sandra Bennett, I, um, I still heard the word of God. I still heard him talking to me. You know, and I, I was like, do that mean I'm a prophet? You know, and then, you know, not only his voice, uh, just him moving me in a prophetic way. And then I'd be like, oh, wow, this is what God showed me, you know. So this is the way God, uh, this gift of knowledge, the word, knowledge of the word works. You know, it worked with Noah. You know, in Genesis, y'all write down the scriptures. We was uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 12 and 31. Now we moving on. I know I'm talking a little fast, but I only have a little time to get all this in. So now we're going to go to Genesis uh, 6, 12, and 13. That's what y'all need to read. Six, Genesis 6, 12, and 13. God revealed to Noah the coming of the flood. Amen. And, and it was a word. It was a crazy word because who would believe that uh, it's going to rain enough to flood? enough to kill everybody amen but this is what he revealed to him and god looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt kind of like today <laughs> kind of like today that it was corrupt corrupt for all flesh had corrupt his ways upon the earth and god said unto noah the end of all flesh and look at here it's coming again Y'all, we got to pray. We got to pray. We got to stay covered in the blood of Jesus. Now is the time to think about your own soul. Um, you know, even when you're being led by ministers, pastors, and apostles and whatever, you know, you, you move on the uh, uh, instruction of them and teaching and all that, but you still got to worry about your own soul because you only and God knows the things that you need to correct in your life. Amen. The same way with me. It's things in my life that I need to correct, amen? And I work on it daily. You hear me? Daily I work on it. Uh, daily trying to make sure that I'm walking in the will of God, that uh, I'm, I'm single, I'm staying celibate, amen? And I'm, I'm, I'm moving and I got to separate uh, uh, fellowship from friendship, uh, seasons from uh, a long season, short season. You know, you have to really, you know, walk in that walk. Uh, it's time. It's time. You know, don't try to hold on to people who God move out your life. Uh, don't try to dismiss people who God put in your life. Don't try to disconnect with people who God done connected you with. Amen. But God let Noah know that he let him know that the end was coming and that all flesh will be destroyed. For the earth is filled with violence uh, through them. And behold, I will destroy them. He will destroy them. And that was a prophetic word. Amen. Um, he was not a prophet, but look at this. God still spoke. See, he still had that gift. He had the gift of the word, the wisdom of the word. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel was the same way. In Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39, you can read that he demonstrated how God revealed the future to him. Ooh. Now, I know some people sitting out there right now saying, hey, then that's what I'm getting. Because God is revealing things to us. He's revealing the future to us. Um, you can meet somebody and you will instantly feel that I'm connected to this person. I believe that I'm supposed to be here for this season. I'm supposed to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm ministering to them, that I'm, I'm guiding them, you know, and I'm, I'm helping them get close to God. You know, I'm teaching them how to walk in a calling, amen. You know, as a pastor, and God will connect me with people, and I would know just that. So then I will begin to work, uh, jump on my assignment just like that. And so 
when you feel like God has given you wisdom, the word of wisdom, that means that he is giving you wisdom to uh, see what's going to happen in the future or uh, to know what's right, what's wrong, to discern certain things. Amen. At the same way as he done the men in the Old Testament. And he said that from the north, yeah, this is just beginning to happen. He prophesied this long time ago. We talking many, 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 many thousand years ago. And it said that he prophesied that from the north there would come an army against the country of unwalled villages. In Ezekiel days, there were no walls such as this. All the walls, all the city had walls. Every city had walls. Every town had walls. But today, there is no, wait a minute, there is not one village in Israel that have a wall. Ain't that something? So it couldn't have happened in day, daytime because they had walls around. Each city had walls. But now they're saying that the, the towns don't have walls. So it's beginning to come to pass. And so also, there had never been a real threat to Israel from the north, from the northern part, before Russia took their place as a world empire. Look at that. So some of the things that God give you, it's not going to happen right away. It's not going to happen, um, you know, the next year, the next year, the next year, you know. Um, it's, it's prophesied, it's wrote in the Bible, you know, that the enemy will come and destroy um, Mystery Babylon and it will come from the north. Amen. So it hadn't happened yet, but it still was wrote in the Bible. Amen. So that's the words of wisdom. Amen. That's one of the uh, one of the spiritual gifts to listen and to hear the word of God, because everything that's in the word of God is going to have to come to pass. Amen. And then when it comes to David, David had the, the gift. He had a gift. He had a gift to talk to, to the Lord, to sing to the Lord, to pray to the Lord, to to worship God, to love on God. Uh, he really loved on God every day, all day. I try to do the same. Sometimes I just walk around the house and I be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory. I glorify your name, Lord. I lift you up, God. I honor you, God. I just keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And sometimes I just go on and speak in tongue and, and just keep on doing it. But I'm worshiping him like David. I'm singing to him like David. I write to the Lord. I write letters to the Lord. I write notes to the Lord, you know. And that's how you do it. But David, David revealed thoughts through his psalms. Amen. Um, through his psalms, how the Messiah would come and how he would die. Amen. Before it even happened. Before it even happened. And sometimes when you get the right things and you are under the Holy Spirit and you begin to write things and you just Ooh, you just get the writing. You will mess around and write some stuff that will come to pass. Amen. You will be, you will speak things in your writing. You will speak things in your songs that will come to pass. Some things you be just saying like, you know, you know, God, God is a good God. He is a great God. He can do all, you know, everything but fail. You know, that those are words that you speak in and you know that he's he not going to fail you. Amen. But David revealed that, and it was a revelation of the future as seen in example of Psalm, y'all, this is another one, write it down, Psalm 2 and 22. Amen. Psalm 2 and 22. Psalm 2 and 22. And, and then another word was given to Joel, Joel in the Bible. And the word was when the prophet Job prophesied that the last, on the last day, God would, spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. Look at that. And we are in the last day. And you have little children speaking in tongue now. You have little children prophesying now. You have little kids telling you about their dream. Uh, 
sometimes you pay attention to what they dream. Sometimes you be like, that don't even sound right. That sound fiction. That don't sound like that could even happen. And don't even, and then you don't even take the time to interpret the dream. You just say, oh, go on, child. That, that, that ain't going to happen. You know, you dream that. That's, that don't make no sense. And the next thing you know, about 10 years later, somebody done made a movie out of the whole thing. Your son dreamt. Amen. Amen. So God is pouring out his his uh, spirit on all flesh. So you can read that in Joel 2 and 18, Joel 2 and 28, Joel 2 and 28. I guess I better put these things on. <laughs> Joel 2 and 28. Amen. So God revealed the future to him. He was revealing the future when he said that all, when he told Joel in the spirit that in the last days he will pour out his spirit on, upon all flesh. A word of wisdom was being brought forth. Look at that. A word of wisdom was being brought forth to Joel. So in these times, let's talk about right now. How many of y'all have had a word of wisdom from God that you know done came to pass, uh, that you seen come to pass. You know, sometimes we can see stuff and we'll be like, I thought I saw in the spirit this, that, and that. And then later on, you will see it, you know. It's not deja vu. You just saw what God had put in your spirit, amen. And one day, God had put in my spirit, I was getting to church in, um, God had put in my spirit that uh, somebody was going to help me do my sound system and stuff like that. And it still hadn't hit me till we got uh, out the church, finished with doing the work, but needed a part. When we got outside and needed a part, uh, the person was standing outside the car and he was talking. And I said, wait a minute. We had this conversation before. We already had this conversation. You know, and that let me know that what was going on in that church had already been uh, prophesied to me in the spirit, amen, that it was going to happen. I already uh, knew that this was going to be my church and that somebody was going to come and do the sound system. You know, I didn't know who, but in my spirit, I already felt that all this was going to happen, and it did happen just like that, just like, you know, God put it in my spirit. But I didn't realize it until we had a certain conversation just one word can give you a revelation that this right here is getting ready to come to pass that this right here already been shown to me already been spoken to me already been revealed to me you know god has already touched me you know god is so awesome that his gifts work like that you know it don't even have to be a word it could be a touch it could be a smell it could be something you see or you can walk in a room and you can smell something and you be like i smelled this smell before you know uh this this already been shown to me. I can tell you what you cook it, you know, because I walked in your house before and smelled this smell in the spirit. Amen. So that's the way God worked. Amen. I just thank God. So the same way God used the men in the Old Testament is the same way he going to use the women and men in these last days. He said all flesh. He didn't say just a man can preach. He didn't say just a, a boy can preach he said all flesh he gonna prophesy all flesh gonna dream all flesh so all flesh mean men women children uh and everybody amen so we all are under the holy spirit right now sometimes we don't even know it but the believe me the demons know it they know just who anointed they know just who gifted they know just who a prophet is and they don't even know it. And they love that. They love it when, when you've been called to preach and you don't know it yet. <laughs> and then they get to work with you and pull you over here and pull you over there. And you get there, you be like, this is not where I'm supposed to be, you know. Keep you out at the club and you know you need to be at church. So then in the morning, you try to make sure you get yourself there real early. You know, even when you sleep in your eyes because you done wrestle with that devil all night. Don't even know you wrestling with it because... He got you at the club, you know, because God done poured out his 
spirit on you and you know this, you know, but the demons know it too. Like when people have a word and, and, and God done gave them their word and their word down in them and they, oh, I got to get this word out. I got to get this word out. I, I, but I'm not a preacher. You know, I don't have nobody to preach to. I don't have nobody to get it to. So you get with your best friend and they get to talking, talking about Timbuktu and everything else. And you be like, yeah, but I got a word. But the Lord said, you know, and then they'll keep on talking. And then soon later, you'll come back with some more of your word. Yeah, but I read in so-and-so, so-and-so that the Lord said this and that, you know, and you preaching and you don't even know it. And then after a while, they just stop talking and be like, yeah, wow, wow, for real? You know, God said that. Yeah. So don't feel bad because you feel this way. You know, don't feel different. God is just going to use you the same way he used the people in the Old Testament, because now it's going to be even more powerful because he said all flesh, not just one, not just Joel, not just David, not just, you know, he said all flesh. So I listen to my grandbabies when they talking and they telling me stuff. And I got one at home. She just, oh, she talk all the time. So when she do talk, I listen. I be trying to get a word out of it, trying to get a warning out of it, whatever she said, because I know God done pulled out his spirit on all flesh, including babies. Amen. Little children. So we're going to have to just be connected with that, that gift that God gave us, the gift of discernment, um, being able to discern what's right, what's wrong, where should I be, what should I do, uh, should I do this, who should I talk to, who should I minister to, um, who is going to be like this with me, who going to be like that with me, you know, you got to be able to do that, discern who is your enemy, who is your friend, who is who going to walk with you in the ministry and all that. So um, read the, the scriptures that I gave you. I'm trying to make sure that I didn't uh, overlook one. Um, oh, read Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 53 also, because it contains a great prophecy too, uh, and how God, word of wisdom, his gift of the word of wisdom uh, is uh, activated in him also. So we want to continue to stay close to God, uh, pray to God every day, uh, sit down and talk to the Lord uh, he will give you revelation. He will give you uh, prophecy. He will give you uh, the spirit of discernment. He will give you the gift of tongues. He will give you everything that you request him to give you. You ask him and it shall be given. Amen. And believe that. And so this is how we're going to have to do in these last days. We're going to have to stay connected to God. We're going to have to stay close to him in prayer, close to him in song and praise him. And the more you praise him, the more you are in the word and the more you doing the things that God wants you to do, the less time you have for foolishness and the less time you have for Satan to sneak in and do his little dirty work. Amen. So I just thank God for what he's done in my life. I thank God for the things that he's doing. I thank God for for putting it in my spirit that uh, no matter how bad it looked, to trust him. Trust God and see what he gonna do. Pray to God, go in your closet, pray to God, trust him, believe in him, believe in him that he wouldn't bring you this far to leave you, that he wouldn't put certain things in your life to change it, amen? And that he would not allow you to go through something bad without bringing you up in something new and good, amen? So I just thank God. I pray that I encourage somebody. I pray, Almighty God, a blessing upon everyone that's watching this show in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch each and every one of them. Lord God, let them know that these are the last days and that they are they are covered in your Holy Spirit, that the blood of Jesus is all over them in the name of Jesus. I pray that they begin to speak this word and speak and plead the blood of Jesus over everything that they own, everything that they have, everything that's that's going on in their life. So as this in Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And God had gave me a word before I came on the show that uh, the people that is suffering today uh, with mental illness, uh, it's not uh, it's not what the doctors say. It's only a attack of the mind. Amen. But, you know, I'm not telling you not to take your medication, but it is a attack of the mind. So when you are 
taking your medication and you feel like you have anxiety, depression, and this, that, and that, you can walk in your authority and begin to bind up that, that spirit of, of, of anxiety, witchcraft, whatever you call it, uh, you already feel like it is, then you call it by name and you begin to bind it up and you put your hand over your head and you begin to pray uh, and cast out and bind up the spirit of confusion, the spirit of, of depression, uh, suicide and all that. So I'm praying Almighty God with you because I don't know who I'm talking to. All I know is God is wanting you to know that he is going to heal you from this when you begin to bind it up, when you begin to walk in your authority and call that thing out and cast it back to the pits of hell where it came from. Amen. So we are not alone and we are he left us with many things to use you know we have to make sure you have on your full armor god also uh use the keys of the kingdom and make sure you activate your gifts that he has put in you such as your uh, gift of the word of wisdom the gift of uh, discernment your gift of speaking in tongues you know ask god to give it all to you because his word will not fail and he said that if you ask it shall be given so we just thank God for being here again uh, this week. And we pray Almighty God a blessing upon everyone that's watching the show. Uh, I thank God for the ones that uh, sow seeds in the ministry. And I thank God who give, uh, for the people who give me a word. You know, a lot of people give me a topic to talk about. So I just thank God for that. I thank God for the people in the grocery store who said they watch the show also. So we'll see you next time on Churches United.